This is the most expensive cup holder ever made. Luckily I found you can use this for a variety of things. This is the alt angle and it's actually designed as a bicycle repair stand that you can clamp anywhere. Now the reason it's called the alt angle is you can pull these pins and move these jaws into any position you want to adapt it to different mounting locations. You can mount it to a railing, you can mount it to another bike. You can basically clamp it anywhere. But like I said, it is very expensive. $265, for that much money you can get basically the best bike repair stand there is, but you wouldn't be able to take it with you and mount it anywhere. Now the original reason for this in my shop was to attach to my fire pole, and if you have a fire pole in your shop, you know it really gets in the way. Now it's kind of integrated, it is my bike repair stand, and I found that this thing is really, really solid. They thought of all sorts of details. For example, if this handle gets in the way of something when you're trying to tighten it down, you can push this button and kind of ratchet it back. Now one criticism I have of the alt angle is that despite it being called the alt angle, you can't change the angle of the bike like a real bike repair stand, but they're actually making an add-on for that. And I'm gonna be really excited to get that and start using it because in my shop, as I said, this is my primary bike repair stand. I have no doubt that this is gonna last a long time. I have no doubt that I'm going to use it a lot. I have been, but that $265 price tag is definitely going to keep a lot of people away from this, uh, all but the people who need it most. This next product is actually strapped to my bike right now. It's a tool wrap sent to me by Steve Pete. It's called the Petey's Wrap, and he loaded it up with stuff for us. I feel honored right now. Steve Pete won so many World Cups, he didn't even really give anybody else a chance to win them. Let's see what's inside. Beer money, very nice, and he's got a Petey's inflator on it. This is actually pretty sweet. Petey's tubeless repair kit, and a Petey's 25 gram CO2 cartridge. First impression, this is extremely premium. Like everything on this, it doesn't take up any more space than it has to, but the materials are really durable. And there's a reason he gave us this beer money. Inside this tool wrap, there's actually a waterproof compartment that you can put money, paper of any kind, or just something you really, really wanna keep secure. So one thing that's interesting about the design is that the tool wrap is just like a little pouch that's off the bike, it's completely loose. And then the strap is separate, it's on the bike already. So you can take this and work with it really convenient. Then when you wanna put it back on, you can just stick it under there and use the loose strap to wrap it up. It's really secure, as secure as any wrap I've ever used. Based on other products and just what it is, I was expecting this to be like 60 bucks, but it's actually like 35 bucks and so, I guess he's not trying to rip anybody off. And as I've said in the past, I rarely review tool wraps because I already like the Dakine Hot Laps Gripper kind of better than anything out there. But this is a little bit of a better form factor for this particular bike. It's long and skinny and so I can fit it right in here. And so depending on what type of bike you have or where you're trying to fit a tool wrap, this might be for you. It's definitely for me. I think I'm gonna use it. I love this helmet partially because it has a removable chin bar. One of the only times I'll use the chin bar is to shoot with my GoPro. So this next product is a specially made chin mount for your helmet. So I've had subscribers in the past make mounts that go on the chin bars of helmets, but this is made by a company called Chin Mounts, and they have a whole website with a whole fit guide and all sorts of different helmets. And what I like about these is it's an actual shoe that a GoPro mount fits into. So you don't have to mess with your angle every time or mess with a screw. You can just pop it into your helmet and you're ready to go. Now what's great about that is if you want to review your footage or something, you just tilt your GoPro up and just pop it out and you've got it. And then if you want to put it back in, you don't on this one have to worry too much about the angle of the GoPro because it just slides in. And then you just basically push it back and it's at the perfect angle to capture your footage why are chin mounts so popular? Why are people capitalizing on this? It's the best location you could possibly put a GoPro, that's why. First of all, your head acts like a natural gimbal and stabilizes things a little bit. Second of all, on the chin mount, 
it's down low and it gets your handlebars in. You don't have to have a chest mount. If you turn your head, it'll change the angle of the GoPro. It's pretty much the perfect place to mount a GoPro, and this is pretty much the perfect mount for it. Now, the one downside to these chain mounts is if your particular full face is kind of weird or uncommon, they probably have not made a mount for it, but they do have a form that you can fill out to request one. These are 35 bucks, which is pretty steep for a little 3D printed piece of plastic. These probably cost 30 cents to make, but this looks really neat, and so for a lot of people, this is gonna be worth it. This is the Kuat Piston Pro X. It's what I use to get all these bikes down here. I put the big dummy inside of our family SUV. As you can see, it's set up for three bikes. I actually bought an additional add-on to make it three bikes. That brings this thing around the $2,000 price point. It's pretty expensive for a hitch rack, but it's really, really nice. Let me show you why. I'm future-proof with this thing. If I wanna put big, heavy e-bikes on it, no problem. It's super quick really easy to get bikes on and off and no part of the rack touches the frame there are other racks like this but this is a little bit more refined just one touch to open up these bike clamps it retains all your vehicle's brake lights because it's kind of covering them a little bit and the hitch plug that you plug in to make it do that actually has these little magnets to hold the wire to the rack. They kind of thought of everything. So even though all these bikes are on here, I can still open the hatch, like a lot of other hitch racks, by tilting it down. Just happens to be pretty easy to do. Also, if you need to adjust or tighten or fix anything on the rack, they've actually got an eight millimeter hex wrench built into this little piece over here, which is locked, so you can never lose it or get left without it. It, of course, has bike locks, happens to have a Kashima coating on the pistons over here. I really love this bike rack. I just have one criticism. It can't hold the big dummy. Or actually, I've never tried. Ugh. Yeah, that's still my major gripe with this can't fit a long tail cargo bike. It's got one other cool feature. A lot of hitch racks have this. If you're going through a toll by plate or a red light camera, it's a get out of jail free card. Barring that one complaint, this has been an amazingly pleasant bike rack to use. As you know, I normally throw my bikes over a tailgate and so I have very little patience for messing around with straps and stuff. I also must say it looks really nice and that was important because it's going on my wife's SUV. So the next product I originally wasn't going to review, Falco sent me these frame bags. They're designed for holding firearms. Draw. And I said, I would never use that. I typically ride with a long sword. But then I noticed they're really, really good frame bags. And the part that's meant to hold the firearm could actually be used for a lot of other things. And so I'm gonna review them. Now you might be wondering why a product like this even exists. If you live in Europe, you probably think everybody in the United States is ready to just draw. You'd be right. But there are in fact bike packers who live off the land and some people are just riding in an area infested with grizzly bears and they wanna be prepared. I don't judge. But like I said, I really like the fact that these bags have a little strap on the inside to secure something and keep it from moving around. And they're really tactical. And this one was like almost designed for the big dummy with this huge head tube. And so I am definitely going to leave it here to access things quickly. I don't really need a frame bag right here, but it is a pretty good one. This is a filter bottle made by Grail. And not only does it match my big dummy, but it fits in my Topeak Java water bottle cage. And man, this thing is really, really well made. It had better be because it's pretty expensive. Now these range from 90 to 100 bucks or 200 if you get the titanium one, but this is just a normal $89 one. And uh, if it costs that much, we should be able to filter any water we want. This stream seems pretty clean, but I don't like to take any chances. The way it works is you pull this out, you fill up your cup, and then you push the water filter into it. And now this, is all clean water. You can fill up another water bottle, you can cook with it. This would be great for bike packing or camping, or if you're traveling with little kids and you have to fill up their bottles. 
So for me, mountain biking, these are too big and heavy. They're a deal breaker, but for a general purpose water filter, I think it's a lot better than those little bagged ones because every three, four months, I'm breaking one and buying a new one. So the price doesn't bother me that much. And I think these are actually really well suited to somebody who's doing bike packing or camping because the actual cup becomes something that you can use. You can fill other things with it. Just a water filter that you can buy and keep for a very long time. So I have here two water samples that were run through the Grail filter. One of them is from some bougie bottled water and the other one was from someplace gnarly. I can't see them and I don't know which one is which, but I'm gonna give you a rating of, uh, of each one. I'm not gonna pretend I can tell the difference. They both, they both taste like water. So as you know, I've been staying in Bentonville, but I don't have an office where I'm staying. And so I've been working here and I realized it's, it's kind of a bike product. So I'm gonna show you. So this place is called Ledger and it's a co-working space. I've been to tons of co-working spaces. They're all nice, but this one's really, really nice. So the first floor is completely free to the public. Anybody can walk in here, buy a coffee and work. But if you're a member, like I am, you can go upstairs and you can work. So this is where I've been working. I come here and find an open desk and I work here but that's not what makes it a bike product. That's downstairs. And this is where it starts to get interesting. The bike lockup room. So I did ride my bike here this morning and it's right here, the big dummy. I keep my whole backpack and laptop and everything in it. And it's secure in here, I've got lockers, there are changing rooms everywhere, there are showers upstairs, but that's not the crazy part. The crazy part is all of these e-bikes, which are just included with your membership, you scan this QR code, you put in your name, and you can just take them out. And no, they're not like commuter e-bikes, they're mountain bikes, S-Works mountain bikes. And if you need to take a call, you can do it in one of these. Yep. So you can ride your bike here, take a shower, take out an S-Works e-bike, come back and actually get work done. That's about as Bentonville as it gets. But that's not even the craziest part. No, the crazy part is you can ride your bike to the top of this building in fact, according to Ledger, this is the only bikeable building in the United States. There are parking garages, but some of them don't allow bikes, and this one is way nicer. So as you know, I've been staying in Bentonville for an entire month, making all the videos I was gonna make from home, only from here, and so thank you to Visit Bentonville for making this trip possible. I always love checking out some products with you guys and giving my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something, and if you didn't, I hope you at least found this video entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.